artists, welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So hit subscribe if you'd like to join the fun and paint along. Check the description box below for all the materials that you'll need for today's painting. Okay, let's jump in. Hello there, artists. Okay, I have a beautiful dream catcher painting for today. A couple unconventional tools. I have something circular, which is, for my case, uh, roll of painter's tape. I also have my clear ruler. Uh, and then besides my three standard brushes that I use for most classes, which is this large flat brush, the medium-sized pointy brush, and a small brush, I also have an old toothbrush that I'm going to use to create some splatter painting. So it's going to be another one of those beautiful splatter painted backgrounds. So go ahead and take all those, make sure that they stay in your water cup off the screen. I got some paper towels and I am ready to get started. I have two colors of blue today, cobalt blue and also a phthalo blue, or excuse me, ultramarine blue, uh, and then also violet, aka purple, black, and white. As usual, I have two little uh, uh, batches of white here for myself because I will use a lot. One I plan on using to mix with my colors, one I will use to create my splattered stars. Let's go ahead and jump into it. The first brush that we're going to use is our big brush. And we're going to start uh, right in the center of our canvas with a light blue. So go ahead and take some of that cobalt blue. This is the blue that has like kind of more of a true blue tone to it, whereas our ultramarine blue is a little bit more on the purple side. Uh, so let's go ahead and take that true blue and you're going to use textured brush strokes, what I call crazy brush strokes and go diagonally across the canvas. Okay, and then we're gonna grab some of the other blue and we're going to start building that on top of the blue that we just did and also building our way kind of out towards the edges. So don't be afraid to actually come into the other blue and blend them together. We don't want like a real harsh transition. We want it to be gradated. And just grabbing some of that blue and kind of going all around like an egg shape almost. Okay. And then we're going to grab some purple. I don't use white with the purple, because that's gonna be a little bit too light. So we actually wanna have just the center part be on the light side. We're gonna go pretty dark as we work our way out. All the way to our edges. Blending the colors together, picking the color up and pulling it into the other color and back and forth. Developing dexterity. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of black. I'm going to go right along the edges. And in the corners and pretty well into that purple as well. A little bit of that black kind of pulling through each of my colors to give it that nightfall, nighttime, starry sky effect. But I don't want to completely cover my colors. push the more color you're gonna get from your brush so if you want just like a tiny bit of black or kind of like this grayish color that it blends to just be really light-handed with the brush really light and 
Okay, that's looking great. Really light-handed. Just a little flick of the wrist. And you can either rinse your brush and kind of use it like a sponge and lighten it if you'd like. Kind of pull the color up if you went a little bit too heavy-handed. Okay, that's looking good. I'm also going to do the sides of my canvas. This is going to create a really clean, finished look for my painting today. So this is going to be done in two parts. So once we're finished with our gorgeous galaxies, we are going to let this dry for a bit and come back, but we're going to do some stars first. I don't want to get ahead of myself. It's just the first layer. I've been wanting to do a dream catcher painting for a long time because I want to hang one above my bed. <laughs> Very beautiful. Native American tradition of dream catchers. Okay. And then once you've got your beautiful galaxy all filled in, go ahead and retire that big brush. And we're actually gonna use our toothbrush now. Our toothbrush and then also any other brush that you'd like to use to mix up uh, some watered down white. I'm going to use my medium brush medium brush and then my toothbrush and now I'm going to take some of this white and spread it out so that I have some space to dip it into adding a little bit of water it's okay if your water is sort of bluish mine's like dark blue and we are going to change our water but for now it's okay if your stars are ever so slightly light blue it's okay and then once you have a nice little batch all created for yourself. You're going to take your toothbrush. This toothbrush is damp as well. Get it all soaked into that white paint and then we're going to want to apply these diagonally. So this is the same background as another one that I have that's like a silhouette with trees. Really really fun splatter painting technique. And it's really easy to kind of use this as a background and then you can kind of do whatever you want from there. But today we're doing a dream catcher. Okay, keeping on that diagonal to create that Milky Way look. Woo, how pretty is that? Okay, gorgeous. If you'd like, you can also take your little brush and even the back of it and do a couple larger, really circular stars if you'd like. Okay, and then once you have a beautiful night sky, go ahead and step away, get yourself a beverage, and let this dry completely, and I'll see you in a few. Okay, welcome back. I have a completely dry background here, and I'm going to use my tools to block out some shapes. So you'll need a ruler. It doesn't have to be a clear ruler. That's just the kind that I have. And then you'll want to choose something circular. You don't want to go too big because then you won't have room to do your little feathers and leather that hang from the bottom. So make sure that you have it something on the kind of medium size uh, and then something straight to go across the top. So you're, we're just going to lay our objects onto our canvas one right beneath the other and I'm gonna grab my little brush and just a tiny bit of white and the first thing I'm gonna do we'll actually do one at a time the first thing that I'm going to do is the top line that's going to be my arrow just so happens that my ruler is just about the right length so I'm going to go just across, just an easy way to create a straight line, nothing too fancy. Much easier than trying to eyeball it. And I really wanted this to look like an arrow, and I really felt like I wanted it to look circular like it was made with a ring. So I wanted to 
take that little extra step and make it really straight. It's okay if the line is kind of fuzzy, it's just a sketch line. Okay, and then right underneath, I'm going to create the circle for my dream catcher. You wanna to try to center that as best as you can. Leave a little bit of space up top because we're gonna have it hanging from the arrow. And just very gently, just pull your brush around, creating a lovely circle. Okay, good stuff. Now, let's go ahead and we're gonna kinda jump around for a bit. Uh, and I'm going to be kind of working on the arrow and then back in the dream catcher and then back in the arrow. But go ahead and just follow along with me because I'm doing that so that we can give each little area a minute to dry uh, in each area. Okay, so let's go ahead and start in the arrow. <clears throat> and I'm going to just use my baby brush still. And I'm still going to just use a little bit of white. And before I start filling in, I'm going to create a little bit more of my sketch. So up here in the front part, I'm going to create a triangle, like so. The first two lines of the triangle will just be created like normal, but then you're actually going to go in. So little inward lines there to create the arrowhead, like so. As we fill it in, we can go ahead and refine the shape a little bit too. So then at the other side here, we're going to do the feathers at the end of the arrow. So sort of similar angle. And then you're just going to go straight along your line. You could use your ruler for this if you wanted. But I find it much more difficult to do the big long all the way across the canvas line than to do fairly straight little lines is easier. Okay, and then you're gonna kinda fan it out, boop, like so. Okay, let's go ahead and fill some colors in now. Let's start with some brown. I'm gonna do a little tiny bit of a simplified version for you guys today from my original. Got a little carried away with all the colors in that one. <laughs> So you can definitely do a really colorful one, but I'm going to do mine a little bit, little bit simpler here. Uh, so the colors that I have, I have brown, red, blue, and phalo green here. It's an ultramarine again, and then black and white. And again, check the description box below for all the colors that we'll need. I also washed my brushes at break. Okay, now you're just going to want to go right over that line. with a brown mixed with a little bit of white. Or it can just be right out of the bottle brown, that's fine too. But I started to make mine a little bit beige. Now when I'm teaching these, I'm doing this overhead because I feel like it's the best way to see it for you guys. But don't be afraid to like get really close to your canvas and often when I'm painting by myself my face will get really close. <laughs> so I'm resisting the urge to do that right now. But feel free to bring it right up close to you and if you, you can use an easel uh, if you'd like but I tend to prefer to just paint right on a tabletop. You're gonna do two little lines in your feather here will create areas uh, for us to go ahead and fill in with colors. So go ahead and choose two colors. I'm going to be mostly working with blue and teal. <clears throat> so the, again, this is my uh, ultramarine blue. I'm going to add a little bit of white to it. I'm going to fill in some of these sections of my feather. So I'm going to do the front two, and then also the back two. You want to go ahead and fill it in and actually cover your sketch lines. Cover up that white. 
Okay, and then in the middle, I'm going to create teal with my phthalo green and a little bit of white. It's my favorite color. Kind of like a tropical beach. Okay, and then go ahead and fill those remaining sections in with green. Our arrow already coming together. There we go. Okay, let's do the front part of our arrow as well. Rinsing my brush. I'm going to create just a gray. <clears throat> gray is just black and white together. And you're just going to go right on top. And it's okay if it blends with the white a little bit because that's kind of one of the colors that we're working with, so that's okay. And you want these to come to a point. Little arrow, like so. Again, you can kind of refine the shape as you're building it. Nothing's permanent. You can always go back and adjust. Okay, and then I'm going to grab a little bit of a darker gray. And I'm going to add some texture into my arrowhead by just tapping it in there just creating a little bit of texture. I want to have some kind of wet on wet blending here. Then I'm going to take some white without washing my brush and just go right across the top there for a nice little highlight. Okay, let's rinse our brush. And now let's go ahead and jump down to our dream catcher for a moment. So go ahead and choose what color uh, your ring is going to be. I'm going to use teal. Uh, we're going to build this just like you would build an actual dream catcher. So I don't know if anyone has ever tried that before. I've made a couple in my life. Uh, so fun, so lovely. Uh, and so we're going to have like a color of leather. So you would have wrapped the leather around uh, a metal ring. Um, so I'm going to pretend like I'm using teal leather for my ring. And I just want a nice visible solid line. This part is a little bit tricky to try to keep this shape circular. You want to try to creep, keep the pressure very even. Make sure you don't have paint on your hand too. I do that all the time. And get paint on my canvas for laying my hand down on it. A little pro tip for everybody. Just very carefully going all the way around. Again, covering that white sketch line. Don't want to see the sketch line anymore. And trying to keep it as even as painterly possible. Don't rush yourself through this. Take your time. That's what painting is all about, patience. Slowing it down, relaxing, focusing. Okay. Looking good. Great. Okay, I'm going to rinse my brush again. Okay, and let's go ahead and jump back up to our arrow. I know it's still drying a little bit, but it's actually already a little bit dry. I'm going to take just regular black. You can add a little bit of water into your black to make it go nice and smooth. I'm just going to refine this shape. So I'm just starting at the background here starting at the back of my arrow and I'm just kind of essentially tracing the lines that I started with. Outlining, cleaning it up, refining the shape. 
and really making it pop as well. And this is another kind of test of patience. I want you guys to outline your arrow. So again, trying to keep it as straight as possible. Trying to refine the shape as we go. Bracing your hand if you need to. Okay, and if you go too heavy handed, you can always come back and clean it up. Remember that. So I went a little bit too thick there, so I can take a little bit of brown, kind of straighten it out a little bit. Okay, just switching back to black real quick. We want to do a line underneath as well. Trying to keep my head out of the frame. <laughs> But again, don't be afraid to get really close. All right. And then we're also going to outline the front arrow. Pretty much done with this arrow. Just need a little bit of black on the feather as well. And I'm actually going to do a little black outline right there. And then right down the center here. Right where they meet. And then where our colors separate. There. Very cute. Okay, rinsing my brush. Now I'm going to jump back down to the dream catcher. And I'm going to do some leather. Uh, again, just like we're actually building a dream catcher, this would usually be done kind of at the end though, uh, but just like we are building a dream catcher, we're going to uh, adorn it with some lovely leather and feathers. Uh, so go ahead and choose whatever color you'd like to do your leather. Red leather, yellow leather, that's <laughs> addiction exercise if there's any theater kids out there. A <laughs> uh, little bit of red and white together. Uh, so it's actually going to be more like, I guess, a pink leather. Choose whatever color you want. And then I'm going to start down here because, again, I'm just giving that just a second to dry. Acrylic paint dries pretty quickly. And it's actually a pretty warm day today where I am uh, as well. Yesterday I was painting with fans on, and that was great uh, if you're impatient with uh, waiting for acrylic to dry in between layers. That's a little trick that I like to do. So let's start right at the bottom here and you're just going to do a little brush stroke like so where it looks like it's kind of coming from the top part here and then draping over. And then you wouldn't see it because it's actually going to be behind here. And you want this to be pretty close together as well because then you're also going to paint a little knot, which is just an oval. And that's our leather shape there. Looks a lot like leather wood. Okay. Looks great. Then let's do one right next door as well. So you can do three, you can do five, you can do however many you like. Definitely start from the bottom though. So that that's centered and then you can build from there. Don't want to get too far away from each other with these two because then the knot's going to look too big. And then you want to be about the same length. That's a loud motorcycle. <laughs> and then just a little oval. Motorcycle's a cute idea for a painting. I'm going to do a Father's Day painting here pretty soon. They don't all have to go the same direction too, so 
check it out I can go like this as well as if I draped it over the other way and I like to have one kind of longer than the other looks nice very very cute already coming together staying close to each other and just creating that little knot and I'm gonna do two of these hanging from the arrow as well <clears throat> okay make sure that you don't get too close to where you're gonna run into your circle so mine's gonna be pretty far back You may need to give your painting a second to dry, but mine looks good. Coming from behind and then creating the oval for the knot. And then just one more already coming together looking so cute. Last time I got too close to the arrowhead, so I want to make sure and Put this in the right spot. Ah, look, see what I did. Hmm. We'll go ahead and fix that in a bit. And I'll show you guys what I do. See, I warned you. Warned you to warn myself. Okay. Coming up and over. Perfect. Okay. Now, since I did touch the teal there on my canvas a little bit, I'm going to try to fix it real quick. Just with my finger. Maybe just like a little bit of kind of a watered down black. See if I can just kind of erase that into the background I'll do that for now and then I'll come back and blend it a little bit more into the background little mending lesson today as well that's okay okay let's go ahead and finish up our leather okay so we have the base color down which is the pink now I'm gonna take some red and I'm actually gonna add just a pinch of black get this nice dark red and that's what I'll use to kind of create some variation in there so just go into each of those little areas and add a little bit of that red. It's going to help you make it look more like a knot. And just give the leather a bit more texture. There we go. In each one of those little areas. Okay, and just one more, and then we're going to leave those alone for a second. Okay. Now my little spot is still bothering me, so I'm actually going to grab some purple real quick. And mend that before we go on. Real life one take action here for you guys. Tried to use the black, but I was in too much of a purpley area. So I really needed to use purple again. You just need to copy whatever the background color is and come in. Ladies, almost like makeup, <laughs> like a blemish. And just kind of blend it away. There we go. 
Way better. Okay, now I can sleep at night. All right. Let's go ahead and do some feathers. So again, you can choose whatever color you'd like for this. Uh, I'm gonna kind of keep it simple uh, and work with just a few of my favorite colors here. So I'm gonna use blue, again, that ultramarine blue. Uh, and I'm gonna choose just one of the leathers, uh, little danglies here to paint my feather from. And this is kind of blue on blue right here. So it's a bit hard to see. What you wanna do is create two curve lines that come together like so, almost like a leaf. And then at the end, you just want it to kind of fan out a little bit, kind of soft to one side or the other. And then at the base, you're gonna create a little brush stroke like so. That's gonna create that shape. Now let me do it again down here where it's going to be a little bit easier to see. I'm just going to do a couple. Like so. These will look a lot like leaves until we add on to them. These ones are a little bit smaller than the ones that I did up there. Okay. There we go. And then a little brush stroke like so. And on these guys, that's really what gives it that feather feel. Cute. A little hard to see back there, but we're gonna add an outline there as well. So don't worry. Okay, looking good. And then I'm gonna add a couple beads. So I'm gonna use my teal for that, this teal blue, and just a couple beads right where my feather meets my leather. And those base colors, getting those on our little dangly elements. I'm going to rinse my brush again and now I'm just going to kind of clean this all up and then we're going to do the center. Okay, so clean brush, coming in with some black and it's going to be outline time. And This is going to be a test of patience, <laughs> but honestly it's, it's less of an outline and more of just a shadow. So in each of these areas, you're gonna put a little bit of black paint, kinda of outline each area. Being quick about it though, and not trying to make it perfect or get too heavy handed. Like so. You can see that really just kind of cleans up that shape. What a difference a little bit of black can make. Okay, like so just a few brush strokes will create that look of the knot going around our beads. Graceful. Keeping our brush strokes light, very, very light. When I was five years old, in my first painting class, they told us, pretend like you're painting the back of a bug. 
and you don't want to squish the bug. So don't squish the bug, folks. Gentle, gentle handed. Just a little bit in each area, really making it pop. If you are painting along today, I would love to see your masterpieces. I created an art share Facebook group for that very purpose. So I had lots of students tell me that they were painting along and they wanted to show me it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to see it. <laughs> so I created the art club and it's growing pretty quickly and we'd love to have you there. And you can share more than just your art that you create when you're painting along with Sky. You can share any art uh, as long as it's art related and you stay nice. <laughs> So I find that positive reinforcement goes a lot further. I love to encourage my students to get creative. I believe that art is objective. Uh, I think we all have our own style. Okay, just each and every area. Like so. Okay, it looks great. And then also inside the feathers, just one really light brush stroke from your bead kind of coming down. If it kind of trails off, that's good. go okay that looks good now let's go ahead and outline our circle as well this is probably the other more challenging part Really just trying to keep my brush stroke light and even. Gently pulling it across. Almost finished, you guys. Believe it or not. And I'm gonna break down this middle shape every single step of the way for you guys. So don't be nervous. A little bit of a challenge, but I believe in us. It's actually easier, I think, to paint a dream catcher than it is to make one. It is a challenging art, so beautiful. Some of my favorite things. These are a few of my favorite things. Dream catchers in space, <laughs> whiskers on kittens, <laughs> one of my favorite movies. All right, and then also, once you have it all filled in, we're going to do little diagonal brush strokes. So that's that leather wrapped around our ring. You want to keep that same angle, same diagonal, all the way around as if you're wrapping it with leather. Same angle. Don't confuse yourself. Okay, let's go ahead and rinse our brush. Now we're going to use a little bit of white. 
can make everything look just beautiful and nice and clean and finished. So make sure you're using clean white. We're going to do quite a few things with this. So first we're going to keep it simple. We're going to keep like the inner part for last because it's like kind of kind of the part that's a little bit tricky. But first we're going to go in each of our little areas being careful not to lay our hands on our canvases, Sky. It's hard not to. Little bit in each of our feathers. Don't want to completely cover the red though. Just keep that in mind. I want to see a little bit of red still, or blue, wherever you are. Don't completely cover with black and white. You want to be able to see the colors as well. Keeping it the direction of your original brush strokes and then also along the center line, your center here. Go just a little dot in each of those, the center of your circular ring. Again, trying to keep the teal visible. Okay, how cute is that? Oh my gosh, I love it. Okay, and I forgot to do this one. Just a few brush strokes here and there. There we go. Okay, looking so cute. Let's go ahead and do our centers now. Okay, so you're just gonna still use white. Okay. The name of the game here is diamonds. We're going to be creating diamonds on top of diamonds on top of diamonds. So first I'm going to go probably from the bottom here and I'm going to create this little triangle and I'm going to create one right next door. Now whatever your first little triangle is, you're going to want to try to create the same size all the way around. The smaller it is, kind of the more intricate it's going to look. I could have gone a little bit bigger with this, maybe kind of wish I did, but it's too late now. We're going with it. Building it just like we would a real dream catcher. That really helps with art in general, is you have to visualize the actual thing uh, and really understand it and become it as you're painting it. So this is kind of like done in the same kind of steps as if we were building one for real. Okay. So it's not perfect and that's totally fine. This is why dream catchers are a little bit tricky to make. Okay, now here's where the diamonds come in. So we have these first triangles. From there, you're going to create diamonds. That diamond shape right there. You're just gonna go all the way around, coming up from there, again, trying to keep it even. Trying to keep them each the same as as well as you can, as much as you can. It's okay, we're just practicing, really, ultimately. All art is practice. And all art is valid, if you ask me. Okay, looking very cute. This is easy to confuse yourself 
when you're doing this as well. So just try to stay focused. And look at how pretty that shape already is. If you feel like you need just a little bit more art support, you have questions for me, or you just can't get enough of these painting classes, I've created a Patreon where we do monthly bonus classes as well as monthly Q&As, which I call q and Arts. So check out the description box below for more info about that. Love to see you guys over there. I'm also creating a course called Acrylic Boot Camp. Uh, and it's going to be all about color theory, color blending, color mixing, light layers. It's going to include at least three additional projects. Still finishing it up right now. And the first 50 patrons are going to get that for free. Or I guess as part of their patronage. But that's only just a suggested $4 a month donation uh, for that. So definitely check that out if you want to support the channel and you just want to say hi with, to me. <laughs> it's going to be uh, hosted via Zoom each month on the third Thursdays at 5.30 Pacific time. You're going to kind of run out of room with your diamonds. And the diamonds are going to go from being kind of long to being more pointed. And that's how you know you're getting to the center. Make sure that you're connecting your lines properly. And then the shape will kind of just build itself. And then once you get to a part where you're in the center and it looks really cool, you can just leave it at that. I could do another row, but I think I'm going to leave it with that uh, for today because I just really like how simple and clean and pretty this looks. Uh, and I'm just very pleased with it. So the very final step here is going to be to connect uh, the top part of your dream catcher to your arrow. So we're just going to do this with gray, and this is very similar uh, to how we did our little other brush strokes here, where we go up like so, and then come back down around. And then just go ahead and outline that with black as well. And there we go. And that is all. Let me know what you thought of today's painting in the comment section. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to see you over in Patreon or on Facebook too. Uh, links to all of that is below. Thank you so much for painting along today. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and until next time, stay creative.